You know, as we were approaching our 25th wedding anniversary a few years ago, I was so focused on wanting to celebrate the moment. What I began to do was the natural thing, plan the party, plan the event, plan the occasion where I wanted everyone to come and be a part of really recognizing the great milestone of 25 years. As I started to hand out my invitations, there was this reoccurring theme from every person, nearly every person that I gave an invitation to. I am happy for you, but I'm not sure if we're going to make it. And I'll be honest, some of the couples did and some of the couples didn't. But what happened to me in that moment prompted me to start a community. In that moment, I was encouraged to raise my voice, to be there, to encourage other women to hang in there, in their love relationship. I know love is difficult because after 25 years, it was not a cakewalk. But I also know that we as women, we set the tone, tempo, and temperature of our homes. And there is a fighting chance for the relationship as long as the woman wants to continue to thrive. But as soon as she gives up, chances are the relationship will fall apart. And so I started the First Wives Club because I wanted to put emphasis around us being first and the priority that that means. So it has nothing to do with being his first wife or it has nothing to do with being a first lady. It has everything to do with the importance and priority that we have. The First Wives Club community is one of the reasons why I host Couples Love Week. Couples Love Week is a signature Denise Taylor.live event that I host twice a year where we go deep on love and we go deep on relationship and we talk about all of the different relationship dynamics. And now you're in the midst of a rewind. This train has been moving and we have now experienced three episodes of Couples Love Week. Today's episode is number four and you will hear an incredible love story. Now, I also want you to know that in addition to my success superpowers, which I talk about often here on the podcast, I also have the relationship superpowers, and I have unpacked three of them so far over the last three weeks. Here is number four. Number four is choose to see things clearly. You see, oftentimes there's a tainted lens that we filter everything through. And we need to make a choice to see things clearly because it's a reflection of how we'll show up, how we'll show up in our presence, how we'll show up in our words, and how we'll show up in our actions. And sometimes the narrative we're telling ourselves because we're not seeing things clearly will paint a picture that corrupts or disrupts the intimacy of our relationship. Seeking clarity, seeking understanding helps us to grow together. And so relationship superpower number four is see things clearly, choose to see things clearly. And if you begin making that choice to see the good, to get clarity, to seek understanding, you will stimulate a connection in your relationship that you can build upon. Now, today we are going back to the ride or die season and we have the Lloyds who are going to come and grace us with some phenomenal tips around relationship and love. So let's get into it. Thanks for checking in, my friend. It's Denise and I'm glad you're here. We recently celebrated ride or die season as a part of my signature Denise Taylor dot live event couples love week. Twice a year, we go deep on love, relationship, and winning together with five featured couples. And recently, we talked with those ride-or-die couples anchoring in on faith, love, family, commitment, and trust. Today's Rewind episode features night number four of that live event. You can't be a ride-or-die unless you have commitment a pledge or promise binding yourself to another intellectually or emotionally. 
Staying together means we must be willing to change, grow, and forgive often. We'll need to heal, understand, and be vulnerable too. And we may need to learn to be in our relationship in a way we've never seen. Darius and Courtney Lloyd fought for their love and had to unlearn many things they saw growing up so that their marriage could blossom. We often see and experience toxic behaviors as children. And until we know and work to do better, we often show up being and doing what we saw. We'll discover more about the power of love in their relationship success and we'll tap into their journey of growing together. And so I am so excited to welcome them to the virtual stage and to be a part of Couples Love Week. Thank you guys so much for agreeing to join us all the way from Louisiana. Um, <laughs> and I just appreciate you so much. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. So tonight we're talking about commitment. And as a definition, what I pulled out was commitment is a pledge or promise binding yourself to another intellectually or emotionally. And when we think about relationships, isn't that ever true, right? You are binding yourself to another. And when you think about intellectually, that's making a choice or a decision to do so. And when you think about emotionally, that means you're showing up being open and authentic and vulnerable as well. And so um, I am so excited that you all said yes to this topic because it can go a little deep when you start talking about <laughs> commitment. And so the fact that you all said yes means we're going to have a fire, firepower conversation. So Darius, it is a tradition with Couples Love Week that our gentlemen introduce their beautiful wives. And so we are going to start it off with you. Please do the honor of introducing your beautiful wife. Yes, this is my uh, lovely wife, Courtney, <laughs> my better half, um, my, my real, my, my rock. Mm -hmm. She blushing, uh, y'all. I am. <laughs> uh, part, of, part of God's promise to me. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Girl, he said you are a promise to him, not just from anybody, but from the big one, G-O-D. Yes, yes. That is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So return the honor, Courtney. Do us a favor and introduce your handsome husband. Yeah, um, this is my, the word that comes to mind for me is amazing husband. Mm -hmm. Like I am um, so thrilled to have been um I guess God's plan for his life. Um, he is an awesome father to our two children, um, extremely devoted, dedicated. I don't know anything that he does that he's not fully committed to. Um, so he's just amazing and so patient, um, so long suffering. And um, I'm glad to be his better half. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> um, that is incredible. When you find that you can, um, articulate your love and care for one another. Um, make that a regular habit. You know, you don't have to do it every day, um, but still away moments to honor and, and really love on your mate with your words. Um, and let them know, just like you guys did, how appreciative you are for one another and how you value. So thank you for doing that. Now, Darius, I believe that in every love story, there's a moment when you know that she is the one, right? She's the one that you want to make your commitment to. I say all the time that um, your husband made the best decision of his life when he chose you to be his wife. So you made an awesome decision. You said that she was God's promise for you. Tell me, how did you know or what told you that she was the one? Um, well, I think uh, I always talk a while back. Uh, I think I spoke it from uh, when she contacted me a while. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you did. Some years ago. And uh, first, I thought I was just, you know, young and just, you know, trying to play game. But I said, uh, what I said, I said, I think uh, 
my wife called me. Yeah, I say my wife called me, but I was just, you know, just talking. But knowing now as I got older, you know, I, uh, I think I spoke that into existence. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, that's what I, that's, that's a uh, part of the, uh, the time that I think that I, I knew it was. Once I thought about it, I got a revelation later on about it. I knew it was, she was the one. Okay. Uh, later on, I would say, uh, there's no specific time. I think I just, it, we just grew over time. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause we grew up, we got married when we was young. So as we was going out through life and uh, as we grew together and God giving us, giving me revelation after revelation, mm -hmm. through our, uh, I would say ups and downs, you know, I really, understood that um, I wasn't going to find anybody else mm -hmm. uh, like her, you know, the way she's fully committed and, you know, just the realness of, and I know, I know in uh, these times that it's hard to find, you know, mm -hmm. realness. Wow. I, I love that you appreciated that and recognized the value of what you had. Um, you was trying to be slick and talk about, I think my <laughs> wife called me, but you didn't realize you were speaking that into existence at the time. And so that is beautiful. Now, Courtney, what would you add to the love story? Um, and then tell us about your family. Um, I think it's just unique. You know, he did say that, like we had, I contacted him um, after a few years since we had spoken, I was, you know, off in college and um, we were just had we just really had a good friendship. Mm -hmm. um, and so I contacted him and that's what he said. Like, I, I feel like my wife called mm -hmm. um, and it didn't have a whole like, of course, I blushed, but we were, it was just reconnecting at the time. So we just have a really unique um, story in terms of how we even, you know, we weren't crazy about each other in school. So it wasn't the typical like we were in love and fawning mm -hmm. um, in school. We really didn't. Um, care much for each other in school <laughs> in school um and so how god just kind of you know intertwined and interviewed all of that together it's just been um a great journey for us so um as i said we've been married well we'll be married um on monday on valentine's day we'll be celebrating 13 years congratulations um, thank you we married really really young in our like early 20s um so we obviously have have we've done a lot of growing together um, two great kids, um, 15 and soon to be 10. Um, and so we're just, you know, we're, we're figuring this thing out and we're doing life together. And like you said, we're just committed um, to one another. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, when you think about your relationship, especially in, in celebration of your anniversary, um, Darius, what do you tre treasure most? Like what, what do you treasure when you think about the relationship? Like she's uh, like she was our friendship, the friendship that we have with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, just the closeness and the friendship besides you know besides the marriage. Because I think you need need to be friends. You know, it's uh, besides just being married. Because you know, not I wouldn't say the love going on, but you know, you go through rocky times, and you know, you still can find a way to make yourself laugh with your friend. Mm -hmm. So I would say I cherish the friendship, you know, besides marriage the most. That's good. That's good. You know, it's a lot of people who, who aren't who married and they ain't friends, right? You do know that happens. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. that is a valuable nugget. There are some people who are in begrudging relationships. And so the fact that you are able to maintain your friendship. Um, it's priceless. You know, you spoke about laughing together. Um, and that is part of the connection that fuels your commitment. And so um, that's, that's a very powerful, a powerful revelation. What about you, Courtney, in celebration of your upcoming anniversary? What do you treasure most? Yeah, I, I have to go with friendship too, honestly. Like when, even when we're in the midst of other people, we've heard people say many times, like y'all are just the best of friends. And we are, like we were friends first. Um, we invested in that friendship for years before there was ever anything else. Mm -hmm. And so if all else fails, like we have each other, we laugh, we joke, we, you know, we throw football parties together and we eat party foods. Like we're just like each other's um 
company keepers. We really do enjoy each other's company. Um, and not just because you're married, but we just legit, we legitimately have a really strong friendship. And so I think that I tr- cherish that the absolute most. Um, I agree with what he said. It's definitely the friendship. That's awesome. So one of the things that I think is pretty um, impactful to relationships is sometimes the way that we see love expressed, we see it exhibited, we see it show up, especially in our younger years. You know, there are different family dynamics that come into play. There's different relationships that we see. We may have um, some playboys in the family. We may have some playgirls in the family. We may have relationships that were never solidified. We see the full gamut growing up. I will tell you for me, um, my, my parents were divorced. Um, my aunts were divorced and I was raised by a bunch of independent women, right? So independence like ran really strong for me in the relationship. There were some things that I had to unlearn. There were some things that I had to adjust so that I could embrace commitment in a way that did not send my husband off and make him run away from me to spur interdependence, right? As opposed to independence, which is separate. So Darius, when you think about that and you think about your past, you think about your upbringing, you think about, you know, your time in high school, your time in college and things that may have been behaviors for you or choices or all of those different aspects. Can you tell me some of the things that you had to unlearn so that you can be fully embracing of commitment? Everything, <laughs> everything that I knew, like, no, really, because coming up in, uh, like you said, I got a real big family. And even though it was big, I never seen, I'm the youngest out of eight and my oldest brother is 50 something. Mm-hmm. So he, they was married like way before I even probably became a teenager. Uh, and even in those, you know, they wasn't the best as far as to me mm-hmm. from what I saw. So I had to uh, earn, unlearn a lot of the things that I've, se- I've seen, in, you know, in relationships, marriage and unmarried, you know, com- commitment that uh, relationship that was supposed to be committed relationship that wasn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are uh, some of the things I had to uh, unlearn. Mm-hmm. Isn't it crazy that sometimes that's what gets the center stage as a po- as opposed to loyalty and mm-hmm. honor? You know, it's almost like we amplify the images of running game. We amplify the images mm-hmm. of disloyalty. We amplify mm-hmm. the images of unfaithfulness. And I'm not saying any of that was you know, categorized with people that um, were in your family, it could have been, or it could not have been, but we see those, we see those images, right. And we hear Mm -hmm. those stories and we almost, um, we almost are desensitized to the impact Mm -hmm. of it just because it's so peppered into our every day. And so when you have that happening, it's hard to find your way, right? It's hard to find your way to say, okay, well, that's not what I really want. I really want something different. I really want something um, a little bit more in line with my beliefs and my morals and what I understand and desire for marriage to be. And so when you think about that path, Courtney, like what did you have to introduce or what did you have to do differently to, you know, kind of, turn the spotlight off of that and seek something different. Yeah, I think for the most part, it was like being able to, I guess, fully invest, like fully show up. Um, I didn't have a large family, so I'm a little bit opposite in that regard, but um, just, you know, the, the unspoken things, like when you hear conversations around, you know, all men are the same, um, you meet one, you've met them all. They all do X, Y, and Z. And so kind of, you know, not even consciously thinking about that, kind of coming in with the expectation that, okay, this isn't going to last um, very long. You know, that, you know, even I, we talk about all the time how 
like two years in, like subconsciously, I was trying to figure out a way to go um, because that's what I knew that things don't last long term. And so if it's going too long, something must be wrong. And so I like subconsciously tried to sabotage that. Um, so just unlearning, you know, the, the ideology that they're all the same mm-hmm. and that, you know, there aren't, there's no such thing as a healthy long-term relationship. Mm-hmm. I think that was the biggest thing. Yeah. And, and I know for me, like, it's so funny because I can remember as a kid, um, Looking back, I really didn't know she was telling me the truth, but she was. So my grandfather, like he was gone all day and he came back and I was like, granddad, like, where you been? You know, and my grandmother was like, oh, he went to see his other family. And I was like, grandma, granddad don't have no other family, you know, and like I was just completely naive to it. Now, fast forward umpteen years we at granddad funeral and here come these people and we kind of like okay who are y'all you know like there were so many different dynamics that were going on that people just kind of live with Mm -hmm. and I what what I want to advocate for and what I am glad that you guys came to the table to help support in your relationship is that we can lift up a standard of commitment. We can lift up a standard of loyalty. We can lift up a standard of being connected and interdependent on one another and find friendship and value in the relationship, despite what we might have grown up with or been exposed to, or even practiced at one point in time, because Mm -hmm. that was all that we knew we can make a shift and choose something different. And so what would either of you add to those perspectives that I shared? Yeah, I think um, for us, I don't even think that we tried to come in and say, okay, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. I think it was just like, we automatically knew that it didn't work other places. Mm-hmm. So I think we just kind of subconsciously work towards something different, I think is what we um, did, especially like in the area of our parenting. Mm-hmm. I think that's the primary area. Like we knew that there were certain traditions and customs that didn't work well for us when we were coming together. And so we clearly didn't want to put that over onto our kids. Mm-hmm. And again, he was raised in a very big family. I wasn't, you know, I was raised as the only child, so I didn't have some of the dynamics that he saw. But that's one of the things that we like immediately agreed upon the parenting styles in terms of how we were going to raise them. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that it's just I don't think we tried to do it. It was just something that we knew didn't work and we just knew to do something different. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so how do you keep your commitment to one another alive? Right. Because what you may hear from people who dibble and dabble, we'll call it that, is that (laughs) I think some of them find entertainment in it. I -hmm. think some of them find value, worthiness in it, justification, fun. I think Mm -hmm. they find all of those different dynamics in the dibble, in the dabble, however Mm -hmm. it manifests or show up. So let me ask the question of you, when you're looking to grow intimately together and keep your bond strong. And when I say intimately together, I'm not necessarily talking about the bedroom. I'm talking about Mm -hmm. the connectivity between the two of you. What are ways that you're intentionally staying connected to one another? I think we like drown out distractions. Like we don't live, um, we don't live where we're from. So we're in close proximity, like we're an hour and a half away, but we moved. Um, And so we don't have the external influences. So it's kind of like it's us in this little, I don't know, bubble, Mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, And we just kind of kept it. We just kept out external. Kept it us. Yeah, just kept it us, literally. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we didn't pull on a lot of other people when we were walking through things. We kind of leaned on our men's sports for that. And... I think that's been a successful piece, a critically su- successful piece for us. It's just not having the external. And I think one of the couples the other day mentioned something like that. Like when they got married, they didn't tell family, which we, you know, we had a wedding, so we told family. Mm-hmm. But I could I could relate to why it was important to keep that bond really close knit. 
And so I think that's what helps us to stay committed to each other. We don't have a lot of external things going on. Gotcha. Gotcha. Darius, what would you add to that? Um, Repeat the question to me again. So I, <laughs> what do, yeah, that's I okay. in my mind. That's a, no, that's okay. How, what are you intentionally doing to keep that connectivity strong between the two of you? Yeah, like, yeah, like she said, just, uh, well, I said to keeping it between us and um, not letting, uh, you know, she likes FaceTime, you know, so I, we try to, I'm more of a, you know, as I've gotten older, I'm trying to be more attentive and listening into, you know, what she, she likes uh, to do. So I know she likes more uh, FaceTime, you know, sitting down one-on-one. Mm-hmm. And uh, like she said, keeping everybody else out of our, uh, you know, you don't have to let everybody know everything that's going on inside of your relationship. Mm-hmm. Just keep it between you all. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think in some relationship, it's nothing going to change until you change your mindset, the way you see marriage. Mm-hmm. And uh, find you some mentors. Like I said, we had some mentors, and I think God put them uh, in our lives for the period of uh, you know the period that He did put them in. It was a, a big help because it was actually my first time of seeing you know somebody that actually loved their wife and took care of their family like it, they were supposed to. Mm-hmm. So it was something to combat what I've seen all my life. Mm-hmm. So now, I, I, since I've seen it, I can be like, no, it. It doesn't supposed to go how how I've seen it all my life. You know, mm-hmm. you can't commit. You can't take care of your family. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what I would say about it. That's that's really good um, because that does make a difference. Um, the The Bible tells us bad company corrupts good morals, and essentially, what that means is the circle that you have around you makes a difference. So there's a couple of things that I think is powerful in what each of you shared. The first was the decision to kind of steal away from it, right? To separate Mm -hmm. from those things that um, probably weren't the healthiest or in the best interest of your family in your relationship. So um, oftentimes people... That, that's hard for people to conceive because they don't know any different. And sometimes we are afraid to make that step to, to get away from the things that appear to be that bad company, right? Which is corrupting the good morals. The second thing that I heard you guys say is a decision about how we want our relationship to be. So more than just getting away from it, it was a decision to say, Let's have a conversation about what we intentionally want for our relationship and how we're going to inter- interact and engage with one another and using that as the, the guidance for you as opposed to what you were exposed to it. And Darius, I love the very last point that you made around mentorship um, and being able to recognize the value of that. I know for our marriage, we have that testimony too, right? Where I'll be completely transparent. If they didn't, if they weren't there, we would not have made it. Uh, And that is the honest to God's truth. Uh, My husband and I are coming up on, we just celebrated 27 years of marriage. And I'm telling you, we wouldn't have made it to three if they had not been there for sure. And so um, mentorship didn't necessarily come with an application to say, I want to apply for a mentor. It didn't work that way, right? It was identifying a couple that we could make connection with who had a solid relationship resume. It, It didn't matter where they worked at. It didn't matter what their education was in that sense. I want to know the resume of your relationship and then their willingness to be available to us, right? Um, and, And being able to invest in us in terms of their time and hear our, hear our complaints and hear our stories, but just being willing to be available. And that makes a difference. Um, But you got to be open to it, right? Mm -hmm. Because even if God reveals to you someone who could 
give you that insight and give you that perspective. If you shoot it down and walk away from it, um, you are walking away from really, really key help. And so I think the examples that mentors are able to give us, especially when they're of good relationship, um, is extremely valuable. But we first got to do um, the the check on ourselves to recognize we don't have it all together, you know, mm-hmm. and that we need some help and some examples. Now, I know I know a little bit about your story, obviously, because I talk to Courtney on a regular basis around relationship. But tell me about the mentors that got involved with you guys, and tell me about how that relationship was forged, <laughs> and and how they were able to help you. That was literally. A divine intervention. We, um, I, I always say God pursued us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Darius continuously ran into this guy. We did not know him over and over. Walmart, AutoZone. And he kept inviting us to their B, their B group survival studies. Mm-hmm. And we kept saying, oh, we don't come. And we never did. Because we were just like, we were living. We weren't even trying to say something's wrong with us. We just thought we were good. Mm-hmm. And so that's how it started. We went to their Bible study. We like, we're going to go this one time just to get it done. Because we keep running into him over and over. Mm-hmm. And that's where it started. We went to their Bible study. Didn't know anything about this couple. Um, was at a completely different church than what we were going to. And that's where it started. Mm-hmm. They asked to pray for us. Um, and then I think right when we got ready to make our first year anniversary is when we were ready to, or I was ready to <laughs> say, <laughs> I'm done. Let's talk about the D word. We got to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and I called her. It's like, hey, I think we're just going to go ahead and divorce. We're just going to go on and hang it up. And then she was like, no, y'all just really need somebody to intervene. Mm-hmm. And so that's when they kind of took more of a, you know, active role. And we started meeting with them every so often. So it was literally God pursuing us. Mm-hmm. We were not trying to find them. Mm-hmm. He just pursued us. Yeah. And, and sometimes we ignore people like that, unfortunately. We mm-hmm. dismiss them. We ignore mm-hmm. them. And God is trying to get your attention. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I overspoke you. What did you say? Oh, no, I was. that's what I was saying. Like God knew that that year mark was coming when I'd be ready to bow out. And so they were already in position um, for that moment. Okay. Yeah. Darius, what would you add about that experience? Um, like she said, it was a uh, divine experience because like you say, it was, um, like she said, it, we was on the verge, well, she was on the verge of ready to go. I guess I was running off. <laughs> he um, was happy. He was fine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, I knew is uh, deep down inside, I knew what I, you know what I wanted, but like I said, my my the upbringing, it, it just has so much of a hold on you. Like I said, to that mindset change, or uh, God God intervene, um, and and you know and and give you a visit is when you you know your mindset change. So, but I think that was a a, a big help by us getting those mentors. We uh, commend them all the time, and mm-hmm. like everything, every time we talk to somebody, uh, or we always give them kudos for what they've done and always uh, let them know that we appreciate what they, mm-hmm. what they did uh, yeah. with us. Mm-hmm. So that's why mm-hmm. I would say always uh, get, get some mentors and somebody that's really committed to each other. Mm-hmm. We always say we know what realness is. So if you, you should know when you find somebody that by their actions and how they are actually committed to each other. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So when we talk about commitment, Um, there's this aspect of vulnerability that comes into play, right? Because I grew up with all the independence, right? Very, very strong, very, very independent. And so tapping into my vulnerable side has been the thing that has allowed me to both receive from my husband and and be available to give to him. One of the things I say often is that love is all about sacrifice. Like if you go back and you read that passage, there is no I in there at all. It's like, love is this, love is this. It's all about the action of doing something for somebody else. So when you think about being vulnerable and how that plays into it, um, what do you understand about trust 
that feeds into that as well, right? Because that's where it gets a little hairy because commitment means like I'm all in on trust and I have to really value your loyalty. And I really have to value these things and, and, and give you that benefit of eliminating the doubt, right? Eliminate, how, how does trust come into place when you think about being fully committed um, as well? Go ahead, Courtney. I think it's, um, it's tough. You know, I, it's it's tough. I can say that. Like I said, I know that for me, you know, and he's aware like of my history with trauma and stuff like that. And so just growing up, I, I learned that people don't show up for you. They don't do what they're supposed to do. They say they're going to do and they don't do. And so even today, I still have to wrestle with that and understanding that, no, you know, he's proven himself over and over again. He's going to do what he says he's going to do. So it can be really, really, really hard. Um, But I think just relying on prayer time, you know, um, getting rid of those irrational thoughts Mm -hmm. about all of the what ifs. Um, understanding that it's it's bigger than us, I think is the biggest thing because mm-hmm. we know that even if we're having a spit spat or we're intuitive about something, we recognize that the enemy sees a bigger picture. And what he sees is us divorcing and our kids growing up uh, without the two parents in the home and the way that, you know, some other people have an idea as well. Um, so I think it's just understanding that there's a bigger picture. Mm-hmm. And yeah. It's- I can agree with you. I I can agree with you from the perspective. And it's actually language that I learned in talking with my life coach, right? I didn't realize that there were things that were triggering me from my trauma, right? I just thought I was reacting to what was going on with my husband, right? I didn't realize that what was really happening to me was something that was being triggered from before. So I'll give you an example and maybe you can relate. I grew up with a bunch of broken promises, people who said they were going to do something and did not do it, did not come through. I grew up with that as a mainstay in my experience. And so one of the things that triggers me, I've learned the language now, (laughs) but one of the things that triggers me is when my husband tells me he's going to do something and he doesn't do it. And it can be something as simple as folding the clothes, sweeping the floor. It could be, it doesn't have to be something major, right? It could be something really, really simple. Um, But it's a trigger for me. And From his vantage point, all he sees is Denise is getting irate about the laundry or Denise is getting irate about, you know, whatever she has asked me to do, which is not really that big a deal. Like the house ain't going to cave in if I don't sweep the floor. But if you tell me you're going to do something, you have set an expectation. And because I have so much experience with broken promises, I struggle with that. Now, his comeback is, which I'm sure Darius has this too, and I'll let him answer is, I always show up for you, right? He's like, I'm 27 years into this and I always show up and I always support, but it's almost like you do, but this one time you didn't and that triggered all the rest of that stuff that happened before. And so when you talk about the trauma and you talk about the vulnerability and having a willingness to trust, we bring all that baggage into the relationship and it impacts how we show up, you know, and our willingness to commit is always impacted by that, though it has nothing to do with it. And it happened many years before. And so when you saw that was going on, Darius, like she was being triggered by things or she was pulling from her trauma or things that happened in the past. And you're like, but that wasn't me. How did how did you kind of navigate that? Um, I'm still navigating it. <laughs> still uh learning because it's like you said like your husband say is um like you said i've been here 13 years and i've been showing up and showing up don't pick just the one thing that i didn't do or took some time to do and don't harp on it mm-hmm. but uh but i guess just over the years learning too like she say from her past and learning the things that went on and having an understanding of it mm-hmm. and instead of reacting to it in a and you know in the wrong way 
I kind of, you know, I'm quick and now to have an understanding of things like, okay, you know, and that's come from just talking and conversating mm-hmm. over the years. Mm-hmm. That's so that's good. all I, I deal with. And, and I appreciate the honesty, you know, because we got double the years on y'all and we still navigating <laughs> it too. So I don't want, you know, you to feel like you had to come up with some silver bullet to answer that. And I really appreciate you being honest and saying, hey, I'm still trying to navigate it. Because if Chuck was here, he'd be like, I'm still trying to navigate <laughs> it too. So unfortunately, um, those grooming years, those those nurturing years when all of that happened right? It set a foundation that unfortunately we tap back into as a part of who we are. And that is why the decision that you guys made of what you wanted for your children made a huge difference, right? Of how you wanted to show up for them and what kind of experience you wanted to create for them. It made a huge difference so that hopefully, I can't say they won't be trauma-free, baggage-free, or, you know, they may have something, but hopefully it won't be what you had, that you had a chance to kind of turn it around for them. So thank you guys for sharing. Thank, thank you um, for sharing that. Okay, so the first question uh, or the next question that I have um, is about acceptance, right? And willingness to see and even do something different than the way we would want it done, right? And, and that's a little hard when you come from getting your way all the time, right? It, how did you learn how to navigate that, right? Because I'm sure she... To Courtney's point, she grew up a single uh, child, only child, which meant a lot of stuff went her way. There wasn't a whole lot of negotiating where she didn't have to compromise. And so how did you navigate that terrain of, you know, building the relationship with that dynamic? Yeah, I know for um, me, it was a struggle in the beginning, especially because I think I feel like a lot of women feel like I'm just, I, I keep getting the short end of the stick, right? Like you keep doing everything you want to do. And then I'm over here kind of waiting for you to, you know, come back or, you know, come down from whatever decision you made that also impacted me and I didn't agree with. Um, so I think once I started to understand that again, and I keep going back to the same thing, but once I really got the revelation from God that it was, more patterns and so for me to start noticing the patterns and noticing okay every time this happens you react in this way um that's really what shifted things for me Mm -hmm. and so I was able to kind of bring it down some and really start to focus on bigger picture start to focus on my own like you said my own issues with you know not having other people to compete with in terms of what I wanted and things like that. And I also didn't want him to be resentful and feeling like, well, I can't do things that, you know, bring me joy because I'm going to upset you. Um, And so it was just, it was a lot. Um, But I think that we were able to do it just through the help of, like I said, the mentors um, growing in our faith, because we didn't have that in the beginning of our marriage. We were just kind of, you know, living. Um, I always say as as ratchet as they come. And so once we got underneath covering and we really introduced, you know, church and started doing things together I think that's where it shifted mm-hmm. um, and it, it wasn't so much about me anymore what what would you add to that Darius the perspective of um, needing to change compromise or negotiate and I will I will add my husband is an only child so I can relate my brother he is an only child <laughs> too And so I can relate to the mindset of growing up that way and not having to to really deal with any negotiating of perspective and 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 how they kind of come into the relationship. So what would you add from your viewpoint? Um, I would just say, oh, I would just just mindset and uh, understanding, Mm -hmm. you know, as you get older uh, and learning her. Mm-hmm. And knowing what she need and uh, figuring out what's more important, because mm-hmm. like she say, I'm I come from a big family, so you know I have multiple sisters and brothers. You know, trying to being a baby out of uh, eight, just you know having them, because like when we was younger, uh, somebody always had something going on. Mm-hmm. So uh, 
instead of just trying to juggle juggle the two, you know, making sure home was taken care of first. Or eventually, when I grew the all it stopped. It didn't matter matter so much to me. You know, it, I gotta uh, understand the revelation of, you know, uh, and learning her and doing what I need to do to make sure she's happy and all right mm-hmm. first before anything else. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Really, really good. So let me ask you guys these questions or this question. Um, I'm sure that there are people who may see this, hear this, or even be with us tonight that um, are struggling in their relationship. So what advice would you give Courtney to a wife who is struggling in her relationship? What, What would you offer to her? Um, I would say get in community. Um, that's something that I didn't have for a very long time. Um, and it's really important because you, you, the enemy wants to keep you isolated. He wants to make you feel like you're the only one in the world that's walking through the challenge that you're walking through. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is experiencing this. Nobody else is facing this. Um, and so I think it's important to just get around other women who have some of the background, some experiences, who maybe are even a few steps ahead of you just so that you can see what's possible for you and to just really open yourself up, you know, um, and not isolate because that doesn't, it doesn't help at all. Mm-hmm. And so there is, if there were um, a husband on the line who was struggling in his relationship, what, what would you offer to him as um, help or, or suggest that they take into consideration? Um, like she say, find uh, a guy, you know, an older guy, younger guy, because just because they're older don't mean they have wisdom, I would say that too. So find somebody that's doing uh, the right thing, mm-hmm. being in community with the right guys, mm-hmm. that's uh, doing the things that you inspired to be mm-hmm. or do. I would say get in community with some of those guys mm-hmm. or be that guy, figure out a way to be that guy. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's really, really good. All right. So around these parts, I always like to encourage people to build a life that they love without apology. So I I love to close out with my life, love and happiness questions. And this is where we get to tap into a little bit of your experience. So my first question is this. What's your life wisdom? What would you tell your younger self about life if you could? I'll start with you, Courtney. Mm. Wow. I don't know. I think I would tell my younger self that, um, man, like if you can, like Darius keeps saying, and that's something that we talk about a lot. Like if you can change your mind, you can change your life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that requires you to completely withdraw. And I know that's hard, right? Especially if you're, you're a young person and you don't have the resources you need to step out um, but it literally saved our marriage. It really saved my life. Um, and so I think I would tell myself that where I am isn't where I have to stay. It's not where I have to be. Mm-hmm. And so that if I can ever get to a place where I get tired enough to change my mind, then my life will follow. That's good. What about you, Darius? If you could tell your younger self something about life, what would you tell yourself? Um, I would tell my younger self. Um, Prepare for what you uh, want to be now. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, because I don't think it's never too early to start. You know, people as I always tell you, well, you you just a kid, you young, mm-hmm. but all those years prepare you for for now. Mm-hmm. So you're never too young to be uh, to start getting prepared. Mm-hmm. Get your mind together. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Cause look. These years pass by quickly. (laughs) And so um, the sooner that you can get fixed and focused on what you want to accomplish, the better. And, you know, if I could dovetail, just because you're older, you you aren't out of time. You can change. Right. right? You know, and so if you need to make that shift in your thinking and you need to make some decisions to get yourself on a better path, do it, you know, like take advantage of the moment and seize it. 
um, because you're not guaranteed another moment to see. So seize the moment of taking advantage of the opportunity to drive for the change that you want. So love wisdom. Well, would you tell your younger self about love if you could, Darius? Um, that is okay to love, cause I, cause uh, like I always tell her, uh, what I've told her before that from seeing what I, I saw, like I always remember saying that I'm not gonna never get married. Mm. So um, I would say it's you know it's okay to it's okay it's okay to love. Mm-hmm. That's good. And Courtney, what about you? What would you tell your younger self about love if you could? You know, thinking back to like what I've experienced as a younger person, I would say that love doesn't hurt. Because mm-hmm. I think that there's a lot of growing up thinking that if it hurts, then that's really when it's love and it's not. Um, and so I would. <laughs> so I would tell myself that love doesn't hurt. Yeah, unfortunately, we have some warped perspectives that we can take on for sure um, and really be sabotaging ourselves and setting ourselves up for uh, heartbreak and pain so unnecessarily. So you're right. It, it's not supposed to hurt. <laughs> that is for sure. Um, but there are a lot of people who are are suffering, you know, mm-hmm. and making a choice to stay in relationships that are very painful to them, not just physically, but also tormenting them emotionally. And so I, I agree with you. It's not supposed to be that way. And obviously if someone, um, finds themselves in that type of situation, it is very prudent to take steps to get out of it. Cause to your one line, love shouldn't hurt. So that's a really good one. What would you tell your younger self about happiness if you could, Courtney? Mm, I would say that happiness is an external thing. I would I would tell myself that it's not the same thing as joy. There is a difference. Um, and that, you know, joy only comes from God, but happiness, that it's fleeting. Mm-hmm. I can be happy to the, in this moment and then I could walk out of the door and, you know, something would throw that off, but I still have joy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I would tell myself to focus on the inner joy. That's good. Um, yeah, that's good. What about you, Darius? What would you tell your younger self about happiness if you could? Um, I would tell my younger self what happiness is not. Mm-hmm. It's not, uh, you know, cars and clothes and <laughs> You know, uh, yeah. doing what you want to do uh, at all times. Mm-hmm. I would tell my younger self that. Mm-hmm. You know, that's wisdom. That is wisdom. Once you can discover where happiness truly lies and where it comes from, um, the wisdom of it is to seek after that mm-hmm. and allow that to fill you up and to fuel you mm-hmm. on. Um, It has really been my pleasure to talk with you guys on this topic (laughs) of commitment. And um, I always love to just celebrate you, celebrate love and say to you both that success looks so good on you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of Couples Love Week. And um, just really excited to be cruising through the week and so yeah. thank you once again. Thank you for um thank you for inviting us. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good evening. You too. You too. All right. Bye bye. Well, that's it, beautiful. Thank you for tuning in. Don't ever forget that you are truly blessed with life, love, and all the happiness your heart can hold. Be relentless in building a life you love without apology. I'm Denise Taylor, and you can always find me in our free Facebook community. It's Embrace Your Power, easy to find. Now be sure to rate and review this podcast and share it with a friend and make sure you subscribe so that we can stay connected each week. And remember, God has not given us a spirit of fear. He gave us power. So be sure to always embrace your power and go.